Hey, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to this week's edition of the Construction CPAs Coffee Cafe. Um, I, we took a break for the last couple of weeks, so we're back and with a fabulous topic this week, um, one everyone loves so, so much, and that is filing quarterly taxes. So we're going to go over some tips for understanding what you need and what you might want to keep track of in order to make your quarterly uh, income tax um, deposits. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> a little slow today. All right. So quarterly taxes. So what exactly are quarterly taxes? Quarterly taxes are going to be those estimated tax payments that you're going to make to the IRS typically four times a year. Um, if you if you expect that you are going to owe at least $1,000 in taxes, you're going to want to make an estimate of what your income you expect your income taxes to be. This is typically going to pe be people who are self-employed, um, people who, if you are employed by someone else, but you are earning other income in other places, you may want to be making estimates because you may have an overall tax liability at year end. So again, typically it's going to be that business owner, that self-employed individual, um, but it is not limited to those people. Um, why are why is it important? Taxes really are a kind of pay-as-you-go system, right? So that means that you want to pay what you should be paying throughout the year as you receive your income. So for example, should you earn all of this income throughout the year, you don't make any estimates. When you file your taxes and you have a significant liability, typically you're paying penalties and interest because you did not make estimates throughout the year. So the service is saying you really need to pay us your estimated income tax throughout the year as you earn your income, not just give it to us at year end when you file your tax return. So something to think about. People have varying opinions on whether or not they want to actually make the estimates. We've had clients who are willing uh, to pay penalties and interest on not making the estimated tax payments because they would they feel that they would rather do something more beneficial with their funds throughout the year. The reality is it costs you more if you don't make the contributions throughout the year. So we do recommend that you make them throughout the year. Uh, so you're going to have your quarterly taxes that are due at specific dates throughout the year. So your Q1 payment is going to be due April 15. Your Q2 payment is going to be due June 15. Now, that is not a proper three months. So, so we're not going three months, three months, three months. So that's only going to be two months. So you want to keep in mind, um, you want to keep track of that too, that it's not going to be a proper three month. Now, your next one is going to be September 15. So that's going to be Q3. And then your last one is going to be January 15 for Q4 for the, the balance of the prior year. So you're not going equal three months. So you want to keep track of that. You're going to have at one point, it's going to be two months. And then at another point, at the end of the year, it's going to actually be a four month period. So something to, to keep in mind as you're kind of mapping out um, your payments throughout the year. So you want to keep your, we talk about this all the time, you want to keep your receipts, your financial records, you want to keep them organized and you need to maintain them throughout the year. So find whatever filing system works for you. If you are a business owner, if you are self-employed, clients typically utilize some sort of accounting system, QuickBooks Online, Zero, FreshBooks, something like that where you get to track your income and expenses so that you can determine or develop out an estimate, income tax estimate for the year based on actual information. So whatever works for you, an Excel file, some people, if it's actual receipts, whatever works for you, but you want to keep track of your financial records in an orderly fashion so you can go back and pull that information and then develop out um, an estimate. We use the accounting software. Again, we use QuickBooks Online with most of our clients. So we're taking information out of that financial system to help the client. And we help the client develop out an estimate based on where they're earning their income from, 
or if they're married, where the, the partnership, the family is earning their income from, so we can determine what an income tax estimate needs to be. And always keep track of your records. It is your responsibility as the taxpayer to keep track of your information and your supporting documentation. So you might have a QuickBooks file, but it is your responsibility to maintain copies of receipts that support the expenses in that accounting system. So we typically do estimates on a quarterly basis for our clients based off of actual information that we have. So what their businesses have actually profited, um, what, you know, if again, in, in a combined and a partner, a family relationship, again, a husband and a wife, a spouse, taxpayer relationship, if there's a, a payroll in there, if there's also a business, like we're calculating all of that income together and we're developing out a tax estimate for the client. Most tax softwares will provide you with tax estimates for the next year if you need to make them. So some clients just take the tax estimates that come from the software from the prior year. But for the most part with our clients, because they have businesses, we typically, and it fluctuates year to year, we typically calculate estimates kind of real time on a quarterly basis for clients. But there are a handful of income tax estimator calculators on the internet. So you can go to irs.gov and other places to put in general information and it will help you develop out um, a tax estimate for yourself should you choose to do it yourself. But again, we this is something that we do for our clients. So we do, we do actual. So if... Our client is an employee of their entity and maybe they have a spouse. We're looking at actual pay stubs. What are they anticipated to make throughout the year um, in that W-2 relationship? What do we think the business is going to make? So we know what the business has made to that point. What are our estimates or our forecasts for the balance of the year? And we're doing an actual calculation and we're providing that actual, that number that we've estimated for them so that they have a, a clear understanding of what their liability might be. So we're trying to get as close to the number as possible throughout the year so that there isn't any surprises when we go to file the tax return. Maybe there might be a small balance due or a small refund. But the idea is we would we would we want to get as close as we can to the actual number. So like any other time of the year, you want to make sure you want to maximize your deductions your tax credits, everything available to you. So if you are a business owner, are you maximizing your um, exp you know, your deductions, your expenses? Are you taking vehicle uh, expenses if you are using your vehicle? Are you taking you know, travel? Are you making retirement contributions? Do you have a home office? Do you have health insurance? Do you have general other business expenses? Telephone, internet, office supplies, all of those things. So- Really think about and make sure that you consider all of the expenses that you've incurred in pursuit of that income when you are developing out that estimate. There are going to be your common deductions in order to um, reduce your taxable income. Again, retirement contributions tends to be one of those go-tos that we use with most clients uh, in order to help them bring their tax liability down. Um, if you are, for instance, um, able to um, itemize your deductions, so you're going to have potentially charitable contributions going to be cash and non-cash, right? We all make our, we all probably take some time during the year and we pull all the, maybe the clothes we're not wearing anymore or the household items we're not using anymore. Those qualify as well. So you take those to your local charitable organization, your Salvation Army, your Goodwill, whatever, you get your slip you can take that as a deduction on your tax return. So those are basic things that you want to make sure that you're also considering when you're developing out your estimates also, because if you don't think about those, those are the ones when you actually finish your tax return, you also see that maybe you made, you overestimated and again, you overpaid. So you want to really be considering those items, not just that year end when you go to file your return, but also when you're developing out your income tax uh, estimates for the year. Um, you want to make sure that you stay compliant with the tax laws um, as you get ready to move into the tax prep season for the prior year. Um, if you are going to go on extension, 
It's an extension of time to file. It is not an extension of time to pay your taxes. So if you have not determined what you think your overall liability is going to be by the time you are ready to file that last income tax estimate on January 15, you really need to make an estimate of what you think you're going to owe when you fought, when you put yourself on extension on April 15th, because it is in fact your responsibility to pay your tax liability when you put yourself on extension. Again, as I mentioned, it's an extension of time to file. It is not an extension of time to pay. So you will continue to incur penalties and interest on any kind of any tax liability you may have from the time that you owe it to the time that you actually file it. So keep in mind, if you are not making your estimates and you do owe, you need to make that overall estimate or that final estimate with the actual extension payment. So like anything else with, with what we talk about here from an accounting or tax perspective, it's your responsibility to maintain your own documentation. It's your responsibility to keep track of your own information. So you want to make sure you have a way to track it that works for you. So if it is a QuickBooks file, if it is an Excel spreadsheet, if you are still maintaining paper receipts, you're keeping an electronic file, whatever works, it's your responsibility to stay compliant by maintaining your receipts as well as it's your responsibility to make those estimates. It's it's not anyone else's, so it's on you to make those on a quarterly basis should you need to make them. Um, you want to keep yourself organized so that you can find the information when you go to file. Um, again, what works for you, what works for me may not work for you. So find the right system for yourself. And if it is still a, a paper folder and a file cabinet, and that works for you, do what works for you. Most of we've moved here to, we are completely paperless. We work entirely electronically. That does not mean you have to do that, but it's something to consider as you're trying to keep track of and the best ways to keep track of. As always, there are going to be tips and tricks. I'm sure you can find on the internet and videos that work for you from an organizational standpoint, but it is your responsibility to maintain your own information. So do what works for you. And as always, keep current with your CPA. Make sure that you understand what all of the potential deductions and credits may be in your own situation. Everyone's situation is different. So just because I'm eligible for credits or deductions does not mean my neighbor is eligible for those credits or deductions. So you want to make sure that you are having that an ongoing conversation with your CPA or your EA who's preparing your tax return to understand what all of the opportunities for savings may be and so that you can, in fact, capitalize on them. If you guys have any questions, please drop them in the chat. We would absolutely love to hear from you. And as always, we look forward to seeing you every Friday for the Construction CPAs Coffee Cafe. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week.